Welcome to the Pacheta Talks. And today we are going to talk about Azure Private Link Service. Yes, this is a resource which is different from Azure Private Link. All right, so do not get confused. We have private endpoint, we have private link, and we do have private link service. So in continuation with security specialist series, we are going to understand the concept from the security perspective, and then we'll see what all challenges or security challenges this service helps us to solve. We have already understood demystify deep dive into service endpoint and private endpoint and understood the differences between them conceptually and how it works. And today it's time for the private link service. In order to grab the concept, in order to understand it, I have created a little diagram which will help us. So, before we hit the diagram, let's uh, set the foundation. What is a private link service? Well, if you remember, if I could show you on the Azure portal, private link service. If I go to simply private link, okay. Here is a private link center. We have private endpoint and we have private link service. Click here and you create the private link service. OK, just like private endpoints we have, we have private link service. Everything will fall in place. Just be with me. So if I have to explain private link service, it's a networking feature that allows Azure service providers to offer their services privately within Azure. This service enables Azure customers or consumers to access various Azure services which are hosted on Azure by other providers. Do not get confused with the provider. Do not get confused with the uh, service providers. I'll try to explain with this diagram. So here is an Azure tenant A and here is an Azure tenant B. Let's call this as a service provider because they are running an application which is the service that they are giving, but they want this application to be exposed by these people privately. Right, that's the point. That is the point. Over a private connection, this is a tenant A in their own virtual network. This is a tenant B in their own virtual network, but they would like to expose their service over a private connection. They don't want what they don't want. They don't want this. Ideally, if you want to expose your application to anyone outside your virtual network, it has its own DNS, it has an own URL, and if somebody is sitting outside, it will or he or she will access how? They will access via internet. It will go like this. Similarly, if this guy is sitting here wants to access something outside, this application, it will go over the internet like this. OK, but. The ask is different here. We want to expose this application privately. So. Private link service. It extends the capabilities of Azure private link by allowing you to not only connect to Azure Pass service privately, but also to offer your own service on Azure securely and privately to other Azure customers. OK. All right, so let me try to explain this. This is a tenant B. This is a tenant A. Tenant A is running this service application. And here is the consumer who wants to access this application privately. So what is the setup? This application is running behind the load balancer. OK, this is running behind the load balancer. And we have created private link service here. When we create private link service, we need to provide the front end IP address of load balancer. 
that is the reason it is in the front okay and when we create this we also need to provide the information of private endpoint which we have created here now this service and this private endpoint have a little connection between each other hence when this is this, this gets created there would be an option to approve this private endpoint or reject this private endpoint why because you can have multiple private endpoint from different consumer and different tenants to access this private link service and when we create this service we have to provide the resource id of this pls or private link service and then data will flow through the private link private link which runs over the backbone and it will not go to the public internet this can also help if these virtual network has the same uh, side range in even that situation this setup will help you access what virtual network accessing the application another virtual network and both the virtual network has the same ip address yes and there is something which can help is called net ip which is the information we need to configure in the pls which is private link service the one of the, one of the subnet from this virtual network so traffic will come traffic will come from here and this netting will happen so for this application the source ip would be from this net ip which is one of the subnet of this virtual network so it will look like local however if you want to uh, keep this source ip so that you could have your logging and things like that there are ways to utilize proxy and other stuff that you can do that as well so for this application source ip is netted ip of its own virtual network when it returns back the packet what about this well for this it is just the <laughs> load balancers ip address as the source ip address i hope this makes little sense the concept is pretty clear now right so azure private link service works by allowing service provider this is service provider to create a private link service on their virtual network on their azure resources virtual network such as virtual machine or app service behind the load balancer these are the prerequisite load balancer pls virtual network okay this service is then made accessible to consumers these are the consumers through private endpoint which consumers create in their own vnet which means we all we remember from the previous video there is a ds this configuration happens automatically right so when we configure pls and there is this uh, private endpoint approval happens dns configures this fqdn for this private endpoint ip in this virtual network so if somebody says xyz.com xyz.com okay we are just trying to understand the concept don't take it everything literally when it this will do xyz.com because of the dns request will land where request will come to private endpoint and once it reaches a private endpoint we know this is configured for this private endpoint so request will go through the private link through the backbone and it will reach here then the netting will happen and it will land here right that's how it works so <clears throat> if we need to set it up the very first thing is service provider setup i think which is pretty clear the provider hosts a service a web application or database in azure exposing it through the private link service let me clean this up a little bit okay and secures it behind an azure load balancer the service is is given a unique alias you, even alias can help this is unique this is globally unique then the consumer connection consumers or the azure or the other azure network create a private endpoint in their own virtual network pointing it to the service provide price service providers private link service using its alias or the id this connection established over the azure network and the service is assigned a private ip address in the consumers virtual network 
And just like with private endpoint for Azure services, the DNS for the consumer SVNet is updated so that the requests to the service are resolved to the private IP address, ensuring that all communication occurs within the Azure backward network. Right? This is pretty clear now. Now let's see a few things <clears throat> from the security perspective. For example, what kind of problems it is solving as we can easily talk about it. I'm going to give you the hints because we know the concept now, right? So traditionally services exposed over the internet can be vulnerable to attacks. Private link service ensures that data exchange between the consumer and provider remains on the Azure Backbone network, significantly reducing the exposure to threats. Yes, so this is uh, something really uh, important. Data privacy and security. We can also say uh, minimize the exposure for the threat. Then finally, without Azure Private Link, achieving private connectivity might require complex VPN or express route setups, which can be costly and challenging to manage. But with this private link, it becomes so easy, right? Complex networking requirements. Okay. That could be our third point. So we can uh, take an example here to make it a point to understand. Uh, let's suppose a financial service firm needs to connect to a SaaS application hosted in Azure for transaction processing. Instead of setting a VPN, the firm uses private link to securely connect to the SaaS application, simplifying the uh, network architecture and reduce the overhead. Solve, solves, right? So it becomes the simple. Then, of course, there is one more thing which always comes with such kind of scenario is the compliance. Because many industries have strict compliance requirements for data transmission and access. Private link service facilitates compliance by providing a secure and private connectivity options. And there is something which is very, very much relatable, even with the example, which is cross subscription and cross tenant connectivity. Yes, Azure private, private link service allows services to be shared across different Azure subscriptions and even different Azure uh, tenants, all while maintaining the privacy and security. One more thing I can think of is the situation where you have the same side range, but still it can work. They can talk to each other via private link service. So in summary, Azure Private Link Service solves critical challenges related to the secure and, and private consumption of the cloud services, offering enhanced security, simplified network management, and compliance with uh, regulatory standards. So that's all about Private Link Service, but there's something I would like to uh, mention here, like the steps that we configure. It is pretty clear, but you know, my subscription is disabled, so I could not <clears throat> show you all the steps. Once I have back on forth, everything would be shown. So it is simple. We need to just give the name, then the outbound setting, then the access security and the tags. Now, what is access security? Well, there are three points during the access security that I'll talk about, which, which is really something important this features allows service providers to precisely control which parts of their service are exposed to consumers through private link by managing exposure providers can uh, let me get this up providers can ensure that only specific services or endpoints within their application are accessible enhancing security and reducing the attack surface. How? Let me take an example. Consider a company hosting a multi-service application on Azure, including a user authentication service and a data analytics API. The company decides to expose only the data analytics API to its partners through private link, keeping the authentication service internal. So by doing so, the company minimizes external access points and focuses on security measures on the exposed API. 
there is one more thing which is controlling service access involves defining who can create a private endpoint to the service. Azure Private Link Service enables providers to approve or reject connection request offering an added layer of security and governance, as I was saying at the beginning. All right, so I think this is all about uh, uh, private link service concept and the security that it helps us to provide and the challenges that uh, it solves. Now, if we need to create it that I wanted to talk about, there are like few steps involved. The very first is <clears throat> create a, uh, th there is two sides, like service provider and the consumer. Let's start with the service provider. If we go to the service provider, what do we need to create first? First, we need to identify the service to be offered. Assuming you are offering a web application hosted on Azure VMs behind an Azure load balancer, as you see here, the application provides API service for financial data processing. Let's suppose this application. So what we'll do, we'll go to the Azure portal, we'll navigate to the Azure load balancer used by this service. Under the settings section, we'll find private link service and we'll click add. I hope I could show you this, but if I have any load balancer, I'll try to show you. No, I don't. Anyways, that doesn't matter. Once you have the load balancer, you go just like we have under the storage account. I showed you the private endpoint option. Under the load balancer, you will find the private link service option. You click on add, then provide the necessary uh, information, just like any other service we do, including a name and the front end IP configuration of your load balancer. And then the service uh, will 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 uh, the service will use the front end IP configuration of a load balancer, right? <clears throat> then you need to specify uh, other information like IP configuration or net IP that I was talking about. Then you need to click on review and create. Now, after creation, Azure assign an alias to the private link service. You can share that alias with the consumer who need to access your service to this one, okay? Now, what are you gonna do on the service? Uh, for the uh, service consumer side, we'll go to the the same page we, we I showed you, private link center, create the private endpoint, and select your subscription and the VNet where the private endpoint will be created, choosing a subnet within the virtual network. In the resources section, select private link service and then enter manually, okay? input the alias uh, of the service provided by the service provider, then configure additional settings as needed, such as DNS integration. Azure will automatically handle the DNS resolution for the private link service within your VNet, but you may need to configure DNS settings for any on-premises networks connected to your virtual network. Then review create and private endpoint hit. Now, if your environment includes on-premises components that need to access the service through the private endpoint, ensure the DNS resolution for the services FQ, FQDN directs to the private endpoint IP address in your on-prem DNS server is perfectly updated. That's all about it. You can do the testing and validation and uh, good to go. All right, so I think that's all about it. And I think it was, uh, it was interesting. It was... Uh, nice it was informative and i hope uh, you liked it well thank you for watching and you guys have a wonderful day bye bye